Okay, so we are recording now. Um, what you should see on your screen is the SCA harassment and bullying policy. The SCA prohibits harassment and bullying of all individuals and groups. Participants engaging in this behavior are subject to appropriate sanctions. If you are subjected to harassment, bullying, or retaliation, or if you become aware of anyone being harassed or bullied, contact a seneschal, president of the SCA, or your kingdom board's ombudsman. All right. And so, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Shahrazad. Hello, everyone. This is, I'm Shahrazad Al Zahira, mistress of the Pelican. And I love to shake my shimmy. Our second class, so it's Millie Sue dancing for all shapes and sizes. Here's a hint. I must find the appetite to restore my honor. <laughs> so, what we're going to start out with is warm up. And as soon as the music starts, I'm not even sure if the music is up. It's up. Okay. All right. So, the first thing you're going to do is arms up. Because we're going to use them, so you need to stretch them out. Now this is a sitar and several other instruments, but mostly it's an Indian sitar. Uh, the music is Indian. <laughs> Hips, because we're going to use them. Now, here's the rule. If it hurts, don't do it. We can modify anything. <laughs> Down to the floor. If you can't do that one, go to the knees. If you can't do that, just shift side to side and forward and back. If you have problems with your lower back, hold in your butt muscles. That will protect your lower back. <laughs> All those things are important. Okay. You're gonna even wanna do your ankles. Again, if you have problems with your ankles, don't do this. We're not trying to hurt anybody. If you <laughs> what happens when you have music and you use YouTube? <laughs> Doing three on each side of the ankles. Okay, now we're going to start. Now I'm going to start today because we did a plethora of exercises and dance moves last time. This time I want to work on more of an isolation thing. So the first thing we're going to do is arm movements. Okay, so up. Like you're painting the wall, which we did a little bit the last time. Now here's the fun part about this. This, I'm doing this class, this part of the class so that you learn how to use this. If you're a guy, the fingers stay together. Okay? If you're a girl, pretty hands is nice. Okay? So you can use any finger as a point finger that works for you. If you have arthritis in your hands or your wrists, or you find that you have problems with your wrists, here's a great exercise to strengthen your wrist, especially if you have carpal tunnel. Look out with your fingers, direction up, direction down. Shake them out. Up, you want to actually hear the flick of the fingers. Down, shake them out. Okay, that will help with that. But if whatever finger, if you want to use your thumb to lead your hand, you want to use any finger on your hand to lead. Whatever you're comfortable with. Now, if you have a stronger hand than the other one, if you put them together, they will mirror each other. I don't care how strong one hand is over the other one. If you do them together, they will mirror each other. They will automatically mirror each other. This hand for me is stronger. It is clearer in definition. 
This hand is not as strong, but together, they will do it the same way. They will mirror each other. It's one of the fun things about dancing. Your body will do what the other side does. So again, arm up, drop. Now I'm gonna show you a couple ways to do this. What you do on one side, you always do on the other. Again, you will have one side that is stronger than the other, and that's okay. This is a great way to strengthen that part of your body. Okay, so what they usually do is snake arms, which is one up, and then the other one goes up. Up, and then the other one goes up. Now, if you want to change the way this looks, then you would go from the elbow up. How does that look sideways? Let's see if you get a different view. And you can do the arms down low. Do them up to your body right, until they're at the top. Okay, and when your arms get tired, bring them down, and you can just do shoulders, and that will also move your arms. Don't think that you don't, that you can't play with your arms. That's what they're there for. And if their arms get tired, or if you have issues with your shoulders, drop them out. Use one hand. Because one hand can be just as playful as two. Now this one I love because it's like carding your hands. And I think it's very beautiful and graceful. Now the way a man would do all of this, hands would go up. It would be more of a strength move, much more militant looking, much stronger, much more protective. The movements would be more like stabbing or protection. Much more like that. Women are much more flowing. Kind of like wind moving your hands. Can everybody hear the music? We got hit. fingers up. And circle your hands. Change which hand is on top. Playing a piano across. <laughs> it's one of the fun things about it. you. Listen to the beat of the music and play. This is a great way of catching your breath, have you dance fast or dance for a while. You can do so many things. You can have your hands when you're doing a hip rise, have them circle the area that you're working on. Becomes an extension of that part of your body. You can have them extenuate something. <laughs> My husband's smiling. He likes that when I do that. <laughs> you can 
really excited about the ride. With your hands. And do the shifts with the face. I have a tendency, I like to do a lot of these. I don't ever do my fingers across my face because it's like putting lines or cutting your face apart. And I don't really do that one. I will do around the face. All the way around you. Back around the other way. Zills, you can add them in. That's very nice to do here. Just found my zills. They're so packed. <laughs> but they become accents. Your arms are extensions of you. You can play with them or you're not. You can use them. If you're a female fighter, think of that serve that soup movement. <laughs> you know, headshot, headshot. Body shot, body shot. Headshot, headshot, body shot, body shot. My husband's cringing because the next one is not the cup. Not the cup. <laughs> but headshot, headshot, body shot, body shot. That's also for you guys. Headshot, headshot, body shot, body shot. Even doing the round for the snap behind the head. <laughs> All right, we're going to take the arms out of it, shake them out. Because you've done a lot with them. <sighs> the next one we're going to do is head movements. Again, if you have issues with your neck, take it a little slower. Do a little differently. Protect it if you have to. What do I mean by that? It means that instead of you doing a full movement forward and a full movement back, it may be a partial movement. It still will work. And if that doesn't work by moving it that way, just do the side to sides. Because you can accent it. Just turning your head. Just turning your head. The head can be very powerful in its movements. <clears throat> Part of that flow. Let me show you what I'm doing. Side, 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 forward, and back, forward, and back. Now, if you do have neck problems and that's hard for you, fine. Move the hands. Change the head to this way. You're allowed to touch your head. that you're protecting it. Those are all the things you can do. And if you're wearing headgear, oh, even better, because then you can play with the head. Whatever you're wearing on your head. So then it's not your head moving, it's your hands. It's all the illusions. It's all the things that have you think about being so the goddesses that you are. Whether you are shifting your head side to side, forward and back, bottom and up, whether you're looking up the 
sky and down at the earth. It's all to empower you. <laughs> to make you the most magnificent self of you. Okay? The next one we're going to work on is shoulders. Now, shoulders are so much fun because you can do the back. Forward. And when I do forward, I have a tendency to climb with this one. What do I mean by that? I mean, I have a tendency to go down, come back up. Okay, I'm going to do that sideways, okay? Down, up. So when I'm going down, my arms are coming forward, the shoulders are going forward, and when I come back up, the shoulders are going back. Almost as, as if you're pulling yourself up to your standing in the tension. But down is sort of like hmm. up. Yeah, if you have bad knees, don't do the climb. If you have bad knees, but you have good ankles, you wouldn't do it that way. What do I mean by that? If you have bad knees and good ankles, then instead of doing it down like this, you would go up. And then come down. Up. And then come down. Up. And then come down. So there's different ways. And if that one is hard for you, then again, it's all about how you pressure yourself, how you put yourself. What I mean by that. So if you don't have good angles or good knees, then widen the stance. Because that'll actually give you the same build. What do I mean by that? So instead of you, you go sideways. Do this. It still gives you so much fun. Now I'm going to put what we've done already together. Okay? Snake arms. Elbows. Just hands. Now my face. <laughs> okay. Now I'm not finished with shoulders because you can also do. You can also do up the bumps, up and down, up and down. Does that look like sideways? And if you want to extenuate it, it would be slower. Or bounce. I like the bounce. This is front and back, and it's faster. Still half speed. Is this. That's the shoulder shake. My cat is like, why is she shaking? <laughs> Oh, 
way that way. And you can walk with that one. It's a great way to go around in a circle. It's a great way to play with your friends. Because <laughs> then, what you do with your friends, ha, and you can do, they go forward, you go back. You go forward, they go back. You go sideways, they go sideways. I like to do this one a lot with my friends. <laughs> it's a great way to play. Because then you can do steps forward, step back. <laughs> As you can tell, I like to play with this one. And if you do it on one side, you got to do it on the other. I'm going to lose my belt soon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> As you can see, I've lost weight since I've worn this coat. I keep on buttoning it. <laughs> okay, you can go up. I, have a like to, I like to sit. So I have a tendency to plant the butt down. Leave a little bit. Because what this does, when people are used to you at this height, you spring up. Changes the whole view. <laughs> I like that. Okay, we're gonna take the shoulders out, let them rest a little bit. All right, stomach. Now we worked a little bit on this before. Up, in, drop. Up, in, drop. I'm gonna extenuate this, make this so that you can see it hopefully. So, huh, stomach's out. Okay, kind of like pull the shoulders back so the whole body kind of folds in on itself, drop it down. If you haven't done these often, you'll feel it after 10. If you have done this often, eventually it'll look like that. <laughs> and you can play with that. The woman who taught me, Mistress Alitha, <laughs> used to stand at her lab for eight hours and do undulations. You can walk on that woman's stomach. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but that's how she used, to, she used to walk around her lab doing undulations for eight hours. <laughs> but the undulations are also great for... It's sort of your basic move. From an undulation, you can do a lot of stuff. It will give you the, make it easier for you to do, there's two of them. <laughs> if you can get that undulation down, get it packed really nicely, it's a great layering move. Anybody got questions? Okay. None yet. Okay. Now I, when I do these, that's when I also like to do an undulation, a chest raise. Now what I like to think about when your mother used to tell you to stand up straight with your shoulders back. And for your military guys and your military women, your gig line, making sure that that's good. Up and drop. Up and drop. And drop. Up and drop. Now what's funny about this movement is you get that one really nice, you can travel with that. What do I mean by that? You can go over to the side. Hi there. Hi there. Up and drop. Up and drop. Mistress Rasha likes this movie. <laughs> and Mistress Sua likes this one. <laughs> and they like to travel with it. So 
Running travels is a great movement. To walk forward, to walk back. And see how the arms are? Now, if I wanted to accent the chest, I would bring the arms in closer to me. If I wanted to accent the body, I would have them travel with me. I'm losing my belt here. <laughs> chest if you're holding in your stomach. So what I'm actually doing is I'm going to show it to you sort of like a typewriter over to the side. You go back and then over. I did sideways. I'm going to do it forward. Uh -huh. The old-fashioned typewriters. <laughs> Showing my age. <laughs> but if you're doing a string, Okay. Now I like to circle with this one. What I mean by that? So this goes over this side, comes up, and drop. Now, this is actually, if you look at me and my body, when you do this, over, so the feet are this way, the line goes there, I go up, over this side, and drop. So I make this a full movement, I don't have to. I can make it so that it's small. Understand, if you're new to this, this will take more of the musculature. If you're not new to this, you can really have a little bit of fun with this. You can even do what they call figure eight with your chest, which is harder, but it looks very impressive. Figure eight, what that would be. Oh, we got some bouncy music. Very good. <laughs> okay. But up, drop. Up, drop. Up, drop. Now I like to do a drop, drop. Up, drop, drop. Up, drop, drop. How does that look? Up, drop, drop. Up, drop, drop. Up, drop, drop. Okay. Up, drop, drop. Up, drop, drop. Up, drop, drop. Now I'm throwing a little bit of a Shoulder shimmy and then a little bit of hips in there because I like a combination of movements. But if I was going to do that slow, these shoulders go up, drop, drop, up, drop, drop, hips. So shoulders up, drop, drop, up, drop, drop, hips. Shoulders. Okay, chest, up, drop, drop, up, drop, drop, so hips. Now, I'm doing the circle, is it with your shoulders? I'm going to go the other way. It's a little harder for me because that side is not my stronger side. So basically, I'm circling my chest like this, and then circling it like this. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Yes. Ah, I made this coat. <laughs> I'm gonna have a revolution with this coat soon enough. <laughs> hips. My hips. Uh, you can have so much fun with hips. And again, if you have other dance classes, they will call things different things. Do not worry about it. I gotta retie this. Okay, there we go. So hips, 
Maybe the new hips from hips where it's just your hips moving. With my hip shimmy. Without knees, with knees. And down. Just hips. Where it's mostly your blood muscles and your stomach muscles working together to work those hips. Do a bad back, don't do that one as much. <laughs> that one would be more knees. And if you and what I mean by knees, short and slow. Let's face it. Okay. So just a slight bend. Straight. Bend. Straight. Bend. Straight. Bend. Straight. Bend. next song and then we're going to do the rest the next one take each moment take a sip <laughs> we don't want you falling out on the floor <laughs> that kind of thing remember hydrate 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 when you're dancing but not so much that you're going to give yourself a cramp okay so i'm going to show you again arms the elbows. Hands. Travel with this one. Kind of tired of sitting in the same place, so I'm going to move back and forth a little bit. Come back. Again, this is a great one to do with a partner. Side thing, or just 
washing machine this is a good one to turn with put you on one side you should do on the other This way. Then you're dropping the arms out so if your arms are tired, they're really tired, back into your sides. Put one arm behind you if you want to, both arms behind you, because that can be a different look too. One hip, one hand. One hand on hips, one hand on hip. This is also a good one for traveling. I know I'd be talking a lot more than that, but I'm trying to stay on the camera. <laughs> okay. What's our time like? Just out of curiosity. About 15, 20 more minutes. All right. So the next part we're going to do is, should have actually said something to you guys because I didn't think about it. This is a scarf. Scarves are fun things to play with. Okay, so if you don't have one, what most people do when it comes to their scarves, they lock them in their fingers so that it doesn't move anywhere that you don't want it to. Show you the hands. Okay, and you will find which way works for you. Some fingers are better for you, some fingers are strong. Sometimes you want more of a grip, sometimes you don't want your fingers seen. So you'll have them tucked underneath. It's up to you and your sensibility and how you feel about it. I actually like my hands. <laughs> so even though I do have very short nails. <laughs> Too many years working in a school and not wanting to hurt anyway. <laughs> but this one is a very simple move. Arm goes out and goes under the other arm. It's a great accent. Now, most people, when they wear these, they put them up here. They wear them like that. Some people wear them around their hips and take them off. They usually, I've seen people tuck them into their belts just enough so that they are like this. You again will find your way of doing it because then all they have to do is pull on the side. It. Some people like them behind them. Okay. 
Yeah, join sideways, you can see this one. So the way I go up is under. So this arm would go under here, and I would bring it behind me. And then if you want to fan you while you're dancing, I usually have a better weighted scarf, but I'm not at home. <laughs> at least I'm not at home on most of my gardens. So I had to do with this very lightweight one. And you can play it down here. You can hide behind it. so that you're completely in just your face. You do that and do that behind. So that you're doing sort of a mirror behind yourself. It's a great way to try it again, catch your breath. Or if you'd like to play with somebody in the audience. Pretty this hard one. That's just some a few things to do in this book. Is there something else to play with that we like to play? <sighs> okay, back to the knees. Now, one of the other reasons why I like to do the knee one is because you can go down with this and come back up. Knees are fun to play with because you can use them. Again, no pain. If it hurts, don't do it. <laughs> okay? Same thing with good back movements. If you like going back, Fine. Okay, go as far as you can. Don't throw yourself off the balance. Don't hurt yourself. Okay? All right. Back to arms. Okay? Now, some of my other playful moves that I like to do is I like to do a step forward Step back, step forward, step back. It's a nice step. My cameraman tell me I need to go back. The hubby says back. Okay, step forward, step back. What does this look like slow? So this point comes forward into a point. And then I come back, this sort of hops. Come back forward. So what this looks like fast is, or faster, is this. Now slow it down. So one foot forward, back. This foot comes up, this one comes back. And this is another good traveling movement. Okay? Okay, so next time, is we're gonna do the other side, because you can't do one side without doing the other. So again, this foot forward. So this foot actually points. I'll do it sideways. Okay, so one foot forward, go back. This foot comes up, and back. Up, back, faster. And you can rock with that one so you can go further forward and further back, further forward and further back. It's up to you. I think we're starting to get to the end of the class. 13 minutes, okay. So I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions at this moment, and then we're going to do our cool down. Okay? Anybody have any questions? Okay, so we have one more song. Now I'm going to, uh, if we were in a live class, what this would be would be the song that you would play in. What I mean by this, we've now given you, I've given you a lot of stuff, given you some art movements, 
some shoulder stuff, some chest stuff, some hip stuff. And normally doing this one, I would tell you to just play. But I'm gonna call out what I would do in this song. Okay, so I would start with arms. Huh? Uh, this one is Loria Kenneth, Focus, I think it's Poca Secrets. The song is Marco Polo. And Master Aiden and Mr. Sabine played this beautifully. But Master Aiden used to play this for me all the time. <laughs> so I'm pretty partial to this one. And I'm now this, I would do a little rock. So it would be a little rock forward, a little rock back. Hips. Hmm. <laughs> what I'm doing is a half circle. This is also a great one for my climbing. Now, I don't expect all of you or any of you to be me. I want you to find the movements that call to you and play with you. And I want you to do your own. If you find one that you know that I do a lot, and you teach it to somebody else, that's Mr. Shahrazad's favorite move. That's fine, like I do with Mr. Salitha and Mr. Karasha and Mr. Suad. And Bambi is a, she loves these. <laughs> Khadija. And, and the smile that she gets on her face, oh, baby! <laughs> and then Circles, my chest. Hips. Again, when it comes to speed, I can go with the slow ones. I can go with the fast. So I can do the real slow. I can do the real fast. <laughs> now, if you notice, when I do the again, I mentioned this in my last class. Mentioning it again. I don't do a hip circle full way on. I go side, back, across the front, flat across the front. Okay? Flat across the front. The reason why I do that is in history, one of the ways that a dancer and the drummers would allow the woman to show her modesty is, is that either the drummers would turn their back on the woman who was dancing so that she would retain her honor. But the way that she would show her honor to them is she would not do a full round circle in the front, at least in a good portion of the Middle East. Cannot say that at all dancing. Gypsy dancing, Ram dancing, different. Indian dancing, different, different rules of engagement, as you may say. But if you in the Europe, whenever a European was in the room, a lot of the times the drummers were down here. 
with their heads, and that was to empower so that she would not lose her dignity. Okay. This is our slow down and our cool down. It's a sting. <laughs> um, the record is um, Field of Gold. Um, I believe it's Desert, I don't remember the Desert Rose. Rose. Desert Rose. Um, he did do this one with, I believe, an Egyptian singer, if you will. But I love it. It's my, one of my favorites. And it's a great way to slow down. So. <sighs> What I'm doing is I'm resting on this hip. I'm catching my breath. Switching hips. Switch. Because if you've danced, you need to stretch out those muscles. You need to be really sore tomorrow. Okay. Arms up. Arms down. Arms up, we use them a lot. I call this hug time. Put it all the way up. Hug time. Still stretch the back. Open up. Now, if you feel a lot of tension in your upper back, in your neck, at this point, take that same movement. Come down. Go a little bit side to side. Not hard, not fast. Again, if you have problems with your knees, your back, you can always put your hands on your knees. So you don't go that far over. If you can, and reach the ground. Go a little bit. Very slow. Come back up. Arms up again. Move down like this. Again, not hard on the elbow. You're not trying. So you want to be a little bit above your elbow so you're not putting on any pressure points. Okay. You know what I showed you before with the fingers? Flick them up, flick them down, shake them out. Oh, get me up. <laughs> All right. If you can't do this on your own, take your, you want to stretch out that ankle now. Okay, so you want to try and do one point. Side. Again. Ah. <laughs> one hip to one side. Other side again. And we use them a lot. So you gotta let them release now. Okay. Roll your shoulders back. Slowly. Forward. Head to the side. Again, if you have issues with your neck, bring this shoulder up so that you meet your head. Again, nothing is supposed to hurt. So if it hurts too much, don't do it. <laughs> Please. Forward. Over to the side. Other side. Okay. Mm. Okay, guys, that is Millie Shabanti for All Shapes and Sizes by Shahrazad Al Zahira, Mistress of the Pelican. If there's any questions, this is the time to ask. <sighs> <laughs> Two minutes, right?
I got it. I'm letting people ask questions if they want to ask questions. <laughs> As my cat runs by. <laughs> oh, family. You got it. I thank you and I love you. <laughs> From a deal. Yay. Uh, uh. Anybody else? Adela says she is looking forward to the next one. Okay. We will have one soon. All right. With your permission, and if there are no other questions, I'm going to stop the recording. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs>